Uh, tear down time. This is an old cable set top box and there's a couple parts which have drawn my interest. Uh, there's an ASIC here. It looks fairly complicated. So we'll zoom into that and look at the block diagram and decap it. And uh, there's a couple silver cans here, which is a good sign of an RF function. And if I look at the side here, clearly some connections back to the cable TV. And uh, in here, there'll be some very interesting engineering, I suspect. So here's a closer look at these two cans. They're also known as Faraday shields. They prevent uh, electromagnetic waves from interfering with the circuitry beneath and uh, vice versa, signals generated inside this assembly from going out and interfering with others. Usually you can pop the lids off. Uh, sometimes they're soldered down. Let's see if we can just pop these. Yeah, okay, that's nice. Uh, a little easier than having to desolder them. And uh, let's see if we can get this one up. Sure, looks like that. Awesome. Let's uh, take a look at the circuitry that hides beneath these. Okay, cans off. Uh, this is the uh, RF in and this is the RF out. RF in looks pretty straightforward. There's an inductor here, some discretes, and probably a, a matching transformer. And then it appears to go off to the series of three chips in a row. I can't find any uh, data sheets on the uh, internet on these particular parts. I'm going to throw them up in my blog as well, so if anyone knows more about them. But let's uh, decap those. Those will be interesting. Uh, RF out also another integrated circuit here right next to this crystal. Uh, same thing. I can't find any data sheets on those parts. So absolutely great uh, choices here, I think, for decap. So let's take a look at all of these three dies. Okay, well, this is uh, called Sigma Designs, the SMP8634. And that actually is a good data sheet, or at least a short form catalog data sheet on this one here. Uh, as expected, it's basically the brains of this operation. So also another interesting part to take down to the die. Let's take a look at that. So this is the video processor. It's a ball grid array of the substrate here with, of course, the solder connections back to the circuit board. The integrated circuit will sit here in the center. It'll be probably quite small. And you can see they've over molded it with some uh, plastic. In order to save acid here as well, I will uh, trim it down with a, a pair of side shears to uh, make it faster to analyze. So it's a rather crude tool, but sometimes a wood chisel can be quite handy. Uh, this is the uh, bottom of the uh, BJ here, the balls again, and uh, some parts of the uh, wiring. And here's the top. Now the silicon die sits here in this white spot here. If you look really closely around the perimeter, you can see all the bond wires. It looks like a triple level bond. So those have been the connections from the bond to the silicon die, the substrate. The silicon die right in this orientation is actually sitting upside down. So I will have to get uh, the uh, acid out to strip this uh, black epoxy off and see what we can find. So here we have all the integrated circuits. Uh, the uh, very smallest uh, die here is that little soak uh, under that metal can. This is the video processing. Uh, these are the two chips that I'm not sure what they are, but I'm pretty certain they're going to be dealing with uh, intermediate frequency. Uh, and this little pile over here it looks like a, a little bundle of gold. Um, that's exactly what it is. There's a lot of bond wires in these uh, integrated circuits, and uh, gold is a very common uh, bond wire, uh, even in uh, today's products. Uh, and uh, actually people do go through uh, trying to crush old electronics to recover it because you take enough electronics apart, you can actually get a meaningful amount of gold out of it. So anyways, let's uh, take a look at these integrated circuits under the microscope and uh, see if we can delve down their function a bit. So this is the smallest integrated circuit. Uh, just looking down on its metal canvas was the one that's sitting into the RF out of the set-top box. Uh, snuggled next to it is a crystal, uh, and given where it is on the circuit board, I suspect this is an RF modulator. Let's just take a quick peek at the die. Uh, there's definitely an RF flavor to it, and uh, luckily I was able to sort down and find a marking on it. Freescale Semiconductor. Uh, Freescale used to be a Motorola Semiconductor, and Freescale eventually uh, merged itself into something called NXP Semiconductor. So. That's a good hint, though, because now we can actually search for a Freescale Semiconductor data sheet on RF modulator, and it pops up uh, this listing here, MC44CC373CA, uh, CMOS Audio and Video Modulator. So that makes sense. Uh, if we look at the, uh, going onto the die here, just uh, zooming down to uh, a little portion of it, I can see some inductors on it, another real strong indication that we are indeed looking at an RF function. Uh, RF dies tend to be the most visually interesting if you're looking for sort of wall art or art for the background of your computer. Uh, definitely are, these are great choices along with power splice semiconductors. All right, let's take a look at this next one it's called the CS3112. Yet again, I couldn't find a data sheet on the internet. However, after stripping off the uh, packaging, it becomes quickly apparent who made this. Uh, just looking straight down the whole die here, uh, clearly it's what's known as a mixed signal IC. 
uh, a fairly recent vintage, it's a fairly complicated part. But if I go up to the upper right corner, I can find a marking AD9869, uh, AD, almost certainly analog devices, uh, another company which has vanished from the corporate history, I believe someone bought them as well. However, if you look at the front page here, it says it's a broadband modem mixed signal front end. And then uh, zooming into the actual block diagram, you can see it's got all sorts of cool stuff going on. And uh, if we just zoom out here, uh, we can see this section here is a, basically called random logic. It's uh, the digital portion of it, all laid out by a computer. It does all the netlist automatically and uh, lays it down. But then if you just scroll across a bit to the right, you can start seeing some large capacitor structures and some very much uh, analog transistors. So there we go, sort of down number two on this circuit board. Let's see, that leaves two more parts to analyze. Uh, this is the third largest part in the assembly. Uh, lots of metallization on this part, which is obscuring the blocks below that, uh, giving me, however, a strong uh, suspicion this is a, primarily a digital function. Uh, and then if we come over to the actual main control IC, Again, uh, very much metalized all over the place uh, with just a few of the phi's sticking out. Uh, you'd have to strip the top metal to look further on that, but uh, this looks like a classic uh, high integration uh, ASIC, which is doing uh, uh, most of the actual work in the set-top box in terms of the digital domain. So there you go. There's just some sample uh, integrated circuits that I found on this old set-top box. As always, if you'd like to take a look at these uh, dies in more detail, I'll throw them up on my blog. Um, they're large files because they've been stitched together from a bunch of microscope photographs. Uh, but you can sort of see that the real difference between the sort of a pure digital function and uh, an RF of IC and uh, how they are quite obviously visually different uh, at the uh, top level.